Hello everyone, thanks for coming outside with me today. Today I would like to talk about how to shoot a compound bow, and I would particularly like to emphasize the importance of having a shot cycle or shot rhythm. There are basically three parts to a shot cycle, and that is the draw, the anchor, and the release. And a lot of people forget that it's not just yanking a bow back and just putting the pin on and squeezing it off. There's very distinct parts to it, and you have to be dead on focus for all three in order to have consistent results and accurate results. So real quick, I'll run through my shot cycle. I won't talk about it, I'm just gonna run through it real quick and then we'll break it down into its individual parts. The first piece was getting my front arm, my bow arm ready for the draw. A lot of people get stuck on putting their bow really high and pulling it really far back from up here so they can push and pull and that's a sign of too much poundage. Same thing down here. You want your arm to be parallel to the ground or maybe a 10 degree shift in either direction. So after I've established this kind of 90 degree angle here, my arm's parallel to the ground, I can then start working on the draw itself. Now, everybody has a draw that's a little bit different in terms of where they put their hand. I, if you want a personal recommendation, everywhere between sternum to nose. Some people get real excited. They draw clear up here. I like to go right around my collarbone. Maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit higher than that right there. So your arm is up. It's either parallel. It's a little bit up, maybe a little bit down. Your arm is slightly bent. Not all the way straight out. Just slightly bent to it. You can have your other arm come in. And you notice that I'm not really leaning into the draw, I'm not really trying to fight it, it's pretty straightforward. So the second part is the anchor, and you have to have a consistent, solid anchor. So everybody's anchor is a little bit different, and I recommend having two or even potentially three different places to anchor. Now my knuckle on my index finger and my fist is going to go in the socket behind my ear, and I actually, I will even do this, I'll even draw the bow back, pull it back a little bit, and then slide it, really seat it behind my earlobe. I'll put my nose down on the string, and that peep is perfect. You need to have a consistent anchor point. I've seen people with their hand floating clear back here, their hand's really high up here, and so they'll put it down here, they'll put it up here. You need to be consistent. So the third and final part is the release itself. So when you go to draw your bow, and I'll mention this now because I'm talking about the release, your fingers should all be behind the trigger. None of them should be in front, none of them should be on top of the release, none of them should be splitting, they should be all behind the trigger. You never want at any point for you to be halfway through your draw, your arms up a little bit or down a little bit, and your arrow could be set down range in an area you do not want it to be going. And you'll notice my release sits in my hand when I'm relaxed. Uh, the release sits right at the base of my fingers. If your release is way up too far or high in your fingers or really far down into your palm, you're having a release that's probably too long or too short. Too long, your finger will be really out here reaching, trying to get that trigger in. Too short, you'll never really be able to clip it onto the string and get all your fingers behind it. So after you've come to full draw and you've established your anchor and you've got your face into your peep and you know where your anchor points are going to be, Again, for me, it's the back behind my ear socket there, behind my earlobe, and I put my nose onto the angle of the string. I can then pull my finger forward. Now notice that I'm not reaching way out here. I'm not tucked clear into here. I'm right in that crook of my index finger. I think a thing that blows my mind that I see even really high-end, competent archers do is after they come back and they go to draw and everything, they release like this. Like their hand is clear up here. It looks like they're a, I don't know, a strutting turkey on their hand and they bring their finger down like this that is so unnatural it's so not normal if you take your hand and you just set it out in front of you or you put it on a table or anywhere your hand doesn't sit there like this it just doesn't that's not natural you're adding extra stress and strain into your hand muscles your forearm muscles don't shoot your bow like this I don't understand why people will have their fingers straight out and then also that it has a tendency to take your index finger and slap it down on the release and causing you to really punch your shot and that can cause groups to go all over the place. Let your hand do what your hand wants to do which is just relax. I'm not gripping onto the release at all my hand just wants to sit like that so then I can just pull my finger forward relax my other fingers and send an absolutely lethal shot down range. Now, the final part of the release and the final part of the shot is after you've shot the bow, what are your two hands doing? Hopefully, they move in the same line 
away from each other. So what that means for your bow arm is that your bow doesn't kick right, it doesn't kick left, doesn't kick way up, it doesn't kick straight down, it kicks out just a little bit, maybe droops a little bit forward, or if you have a single cam, you'll notice it'll want to kick out at the bottom. Your release hand will move in the same line, but in the opposite direction. So it's not going to fly this way, it's not going to fly clear back here, it should go in the same exact line, just straight back. If for any reason your bow or your release hand are doing side to side or up and down movements, that'll cause a last minute piece of torque onto the string or onto the bow's riser causing the bow to twist and that'll cause your groups to open up in all sorts of different directions. So something my grandfather taught me when I first started getting to archery is just watch that arrow through your sight. If you can keep your sight ring up there on target and after the shot if your bow stays perfectly level nice and straight and your release hand comes back you'll be able to watch that arrow spin at your target. So that's basically it. It's just a cycle. And once you find something that's comfortable for you, an anchor that's comfortable, a draw location either from sternum to nose, somewhere in between that's comfortable, how your bow arm, is it a little bit straighter, is it a little bit in more, do you get a little push-pull? On terms of your release, are you more of a back tension, so you're squeezing and pulling through the shot, or are you more like me, I kind of shoot it like a rifle, so I just hold my pin, float my pin, squeeze and float, squeeze and float, and then eventually it goes off. Once you find those parts of your cycle, you need to stick to them, so that way you know if you change something and your groups start to change, you know that it's you and not the bow. So that's all for this video. If you ever have any further questions on how to shoot a bow, how to have an appropriate draw cycle, how to have a good anchor, please do hit me up on Facebook. You can always send me a message there. I get back to everybody as soon as I can. You can also leave a comment here on YouTube. I hope you're able to get outside and enjoy God's beautiful creation. Of course, enjoy the sport of archery and archery hunting if you so choose, and we'll get to see you next time.